Let's hope it's not in here. Um, back down over here to layout. Uh, today, I've been sitting around. Unfortunately, I got to thinking a little bit too much. I've come up with some other ways. I think I might want to do the layout. Of course, I did put my original track plan on uh, Train Life so you guys can see it, which is in my photo gallery for how I wanted to do the layout. And I put some videos up on showing how I was going to position the layout with the yard and everything. However, um, due to some financial stuff and me wanting to really get some track laid and really get some trains running, I am really considering about redoing this layout and carrying on with the original plan that the original owner had for this. Except changing some things here and there because of some of the radiuses that I wanted to widen. So let's get to the uh, meat and potatoes of this video and let me show you what I'm thinking about doing. Looking from the garage door, this is the way the layout look. Over there is the other entrance to the garage, besides the garage door, of course. <laughs> As you can see, I've hung my bicycles up. I'm probably going to move those again. It's just temporary for now. And I've started to get rid of what I like to call storage mountain, where I'm starting to condense some of these boxes, put the, box, the stuff in the boxes to use, or just getting rid of it. And over there is where my toolboxes and everything were. And this is some sheets of masonite that were used to crate up the layout. All right, so I'm thinking about leaving this like so. And the reason if I leave it like that, we're going to kind of ease up here. The reason I would leave it like that is, as you can see, at this middle section here that was already made for the layout. Now, of course, this section here is up a little bit because I've popped the screws out of it because I originally... From my old track plan that I had, I was going to get rid of that and um, was not going to use that and that was going to go away. Well, now I'm reconsidering things, so it might come back to life and I might just throw the screws back in there. Um, also with that, there, um, me putting this section back in here, everything flows together. So as you can see from the original way it was meant to be, you had the track that ran around here split off here i'm assuming um he was going to put some type of industry on this area here i might change that up who knows um and uh it, we'll, we'll figure that out as it comes along but that's one of his plans um and we'll see where we go from there there was also a joining piece i still had the piece over there somewhere a joining piece that goes across here that bridges that portion together as well and then this track here, of course, ran up under that. Um, how we overflow that, I'm still undecided. But um, this section here would probably stay most likely that way. However, coming over here to this side, if you look at this loop, this inside loop here that goes around, I actually want to still take this out and bring it over here and bring the radius a little bit wider because that's kind of a tight radius. I like to run a little bit longer cars um, and some longer locomotives, so I would like to, if I could, widen that radius, bring it around here, and then um, if I have to, put a, a piece of board in there or something so I can make that radius just kind of flow in there and, and keep it going. Like I said, still undecided on that. I might change my mind on that and see where we go from there. Uh, so that's still in the works. Of course, if I take this plan in action, I'm going to have to rebuild what I destroyed over here. Um, and that's not going to be too big of a problem, but I will have to unscrew that. So I might bring that back to life. If I do this, I will have to bring that back to life as well. If I do continue this, I am going to continue, however, to keep this partition and making a mountain that will go across here or something to separate this side from that side so that I can have some separation and some type of a town on the other side of this masonite over here, um, which I don't think is a bad idea. And uh, eventually me and the wife will have to move from this home. And the way this layout's built, I can easily pack it up, crate it up, and we can take it with us when we go somewhere. So that's what we're looking like here. Pulling back over to this side, if I do decide to do this, I most likely might 
take and come off of this corner right here, the upper level, or maybe even the lower level since it's low enough, come off that upper level, stretch it out, and still build a nice yard over there along with a nice diesel facility. This will give me a long wall to be able to work on and, and build me a decent diesel facility about a foot wide and um, also somewhat probably incorporate my uh, workshop table that would probably somehow flow under there so I can just pull it out and do work. So that's my, um, uh, my idea if I do keep it this way. Like I said, if I do this layout like this, this is definitely gonna make it to where I can start laying some track, start running some trains here soon. And the good part about it is, is this, this middle section here, after a while, if I get tired of it and I wanna change it up, well, by God, it's not that hard to uh, um, unscrew it, cut some tracks, cut some rail joiners. Of course, if I do do this, that's not gonna, these sections here is gonna um, not be connected anyway, so, uh, disconnect some tracks, disconnect some wires, and then pretty much grab that section out, switch things around, and then build more sections into it if I want to. It's a good thing I like about this modular type layout. It's a lot easier to flow into something different if, if you ever want to. And of course, as we all know as modelers, it's never going to stay the same. We're always going to want to change something. Uh, it just depends on how funding goes. Like I said, um, I could toss $400 into doing bench work to build this yard back here and building this section over here that I had when I had it the original way. Or I could keep it the way it was and take that $400, buy a good amount of track, buy a good amount of uh, road bed, and as you can see, I got a lot of road bed already. Buy some road bed, some track, and start making some magic happen out here. So um, I wanted to make this video because I'd like to get some opinions from other people. It's kind of hard when I don't have many modelers uh, that live near me or able to make it by the house. So I, uh, I like to make these videos so you guys can tell me your opinion. Of course, Lee Stormer down in Yuma, you're going to see this video and you know you're going to give me all kinds of opinions on this. <laughs> and uh, all you guys on Train Life, um, man, if I could start naming some names I'd be here all day long uh, Chris Fudge I, I really enjoy his videos and though, even though he uh, he's really not too good on uh, deciding on what scale he wants to do I had to crack a joke on you there buddy but uh, yeah um, you guys give me your opinions let me know what you think um, of course the last option I had and then I'll stop here last option I have is to take this whole thing here and turn it where that back side there is up against this wall and then if I do that um, I might actually gain some aisle space over here so yeah if I do that um, I might gain some aisle space to where I can bring trash cans and so on and so forth in here um, I'm still gonna have to make this aisle way probably a little bit wider for the wife because she likes to have room uh, to be able to get into her deep freezer and stuff so I might end up moving to relocating that so she can get in there and do her thing let me know your thoughts. Keep uh, the um, subscriptions coming to the uh, YouTube site. I got a couple today. And, um, you know, I really enjoy talking to you guys out there. And thank you for your time. And y'all have a good night.